So this is Margaret Lindsay, and this is a lesson in painting with acrylic paints on unprimed canvas. Today what we're going to work on is blending uh, from one color to the next, doing gradations, uh, working on backgrounds, and just generally like some of the samples you see right here. So today we're going to paint on unprimed canvas, as I usually do, uh, and I do that because this natural fiber accepts the paint in a really different way than if you paint on top of a surface that's already been primed. So it's absorbent and the paint stains and the blending is much more subtle and interesting. So for example, you can blend from one color to the next with no visible shift from one shade to the other shade, okay? And that's really important. Whether you're just painting with, you're painting a ranuncula in this case, you're painting a sky, and you're painting a background, okay? And it wants a subtle shift from one to the next. And then after that dries, you come in and paint all sorts of other stuff on top. So let's do a little blending and let's play with some sunset colors because people like to work with sunsets. So here's a few samples, gradations done a variety of ways. Let's get those out of the way. And to see if we can get a gradation working from top to bottom. Move these back a little bit. And, um, and we'll do that fairly quickly. So again, we have unprimed canvas, just a piece of 100% uh, cotton duck, and um, it has no primer on it. So we're gonna get it now, first, sopping wet. And I'm gonna use my water bucket and my little fuzzy brush. And I'm gonna get the whole thing sopping wet. When I'm painting on paintings where I have the canvas stretched already on a stretcher bar, I have been known to actually take them outside and hose them down, just get them sopping wet, okay? So we're getting this wet. I'm making sure that it's wet all the way through. And then the trick with a gradation like this is that each layer needs its own brush. So let's see what we can do about that. So we're gonna start with yellow. Actually, we'll start with some white down at the bottom. And in this case, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put a fair amount of white on here This would be, okay, so we got, our, we got our white going. Now we're going to put some yellow in. and I'm looking for just the right sponge brush. Remember to get them wet first. If you use a dry brush, you have no control. The paint just globs on, okay? So there's, we're gonna put some yellow in there. I'm gonna use the other end of this so just to get some transparent Indian yellow in there. It's a slightly different color, you can't really see it. And I'm gonna get a little bit of orange. I'm 
and I'm again the key here is that it's wet to start out with but we're not we're not blending yet right now we're just laying the colors down in getting them there Get our red. And then last, let's get a little purple up there. Okay, now let's do a little bit of blending. Because that purple's kind of heavy, I'm not going to do any more with that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in with the red. Bring the purple down a little bit. I'm going to use the other end of this oops brush. That's a little more than I wanted. So let's get a little more red in there. I'm going to get a blend it up a bit. But I don't want to go up into that purple with the red brush. So I'm going to Again, grab that purple brush so that the blending stays subtle the way we want it. I'm going to see if I can get that red blended in with the orange. And of course, we could have just made the orange by blending red and yellow, but I particularly like that orange. I think that's the pyrrole orange. Okay, so now let's come in. So that's the red. Now notice I'm always I'm bringing the, the darker color into the light. So we pretty much have a gradation going here. Like so if you were doing your, your sun, uh, and my camera is uh, making that look not quite as subtle as it really is, but I think you get the idea. But let's, let's play with things a little bit more. Let's take our white brush, get a little more white on it. And see if we can get some, maybe some kind of cloudy stuff in there just for fun. And also, because I really don't like the color that that got up there, and there's a little too much red up in there, so Some 
cloudy looking stuff going on in there. too much. And I'm just going to reuse. I got another one I'm going to use. Let's see. That's, these are just pieces of newspaper that I've torn. I've spent a lot of time looking at sunsets on the ocean. And there's usually a lot of a lot of fog or fog wants to come in. Okay. Now see what happened there? I was in the red and I came down to the white and I wasn't paying attention. So I'm just going to blend that in because it's a sunset after all, right? And I'm just going to go with that. And, uh, and I'm going to do, because we're playing sunset here, let's see, what else does this need? I think it still needs more white. Because right down there at the bottom would be where all that put a little bit of gray in there. It might wreck it, but why not? Let's try it. And I'm going to use my favorite, Payne's Gray. I know you can hardly read it on the bottle. Let me show you a better bottle. So this is what I use instead of black. It's a blue-gray. If you ever want it really black, just add a little purple and green to it and it'll get nice and dense without being that flat, dull black. Because black, black, doesn't exist in the natural world at all. It just doesn't exist anywhere. So this blue-gray is a much more natural shadow. Okay, so let's, let's Put a little bit of it in here. Whew, that got dark. Alrighty. But this is... This is a sunset, so we're going to see if... We can make it a little more... Sunsetty. I'm going to bring that dark down in a little bit. And then, I think I'm going to have to go back in with a little purple again. It got a little too light. And again, this is still sopping wet, so it's pretty easy to do what we're doing here. Our white brush is just about trashed. Let's see if we can Pull in a few little cloud bits. OK, 
Okay, you're getting the idea. This is a little on the bright side, but I'm working fast. Um, I think we're going to call that good enough.